All right, we're back with you here. Uh, the stern section's entering into the sound. Uh, that's Jekyll Island uh, that you see on the other side of the uh, barge. Uh, getting ready to pass by the Jekyll Island fishing pier. The rain is almost stopped, but the weather's not going to allow us to put a drone up today, and that is very unfortunate really wanted to get some shots. This is as it left. We're just not in the cards today. We're going to do our best to try to bring you some of this while it happens, while it's headed out, and maybe we'll get lucky and get some shots of the Golden Ray and the VB10,000 in the background as we pass by. Ooh. You are first, and that is outstanding. Uh, this was actually supposed to happen uh, this morning. Uh, we were over at the Port of Brunswick before daylight, and uh, they started to depart with it, and then there was a change of plans, and uh, they put it back at the dock and got out of here at uh, just a little after four. I think they got the light lines off and have started out with this piece of the ship. Uh, you remember this was the second cut of the Golden Ray and they didn't have as much work I don't think uh, on this section as they did on the bow section when it departed as far as uh, moving cars around. We saw one car, uh, one vehicle that was uh, down on the deck. Uh, when that bow section left, the first section, was, I, don't, I don't know, maybe a dozen that were down on the deck when it left. Now we can see the, the VB and the Golden Ray out in the uh, distance. VB still not over uh, the shipwreck. We're hoping to see them move the VB over the shipwreck soon. That would be wonderful if that happened. Because as soon as they do that, we know we're getting close to the uh, start of the third cut. Uh, this next section that they're going to cut is going to going to include that piece of the. Uh, the ship that has the main engine in it, and that's going to be kind of exciting to see that lifted up. Again, we're trying to do this with the phone. It's about the only thing, only piece of equipment that we have that's waterproof. Just not a good day today. If the departure had occurred uh, this morning, I guess it was originally scheduled. We would have been able to bring uh, probably some better shots. But this is what we've. Uh, this is what we got today. The last section that left, the, uh, the, which was the, uh, the first section cut, the bow section, when it passed by the St. Simons Pier, there were many people out to see, the, to see that bow section leave. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to be the case today because yeah, it's 
it's starting to rain again now. But we're gonna try to stay with the with the barge for a little bit. I saw someone pipe up there that they were watching from Ireland. That is amazing, and we certainly thank you for watching. The interest in this ship salvage operation is, it's gone global. And I certainly appreciate it. We had no, no idea that it was gonna get like that. When we originally started the channel, we thought that we would have maybe a few local folks who might be interested in what was going on. And we were just having a good time doing it. But uh, the desire to see this ship leave the St. Simon Sound is, is kind of gone global. And we're really having a good time bringing, the, bringing this stuff to you guys. And that is an impressive sight to see that. that huge chunk of ship loaded onto that barge as it prepares to head over to Gibson, Louisiana over in the Gulf of Mexico for disposal. And I, I can't even imagine what that task is gonna be like uh, once that piece gets there. That would be interesting to see what goes on over there. Yeah, it is kind of amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Someone said we went to the moon, too. Can you believe that? <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Long. It is a pleasure to see you, sir, joining us here on the channel tonight. Kind of starting to get in here a little closer to the to the VB and the Golden Ray. Uh, the one saving grace we have today is the the wind is is not uh, as strong as it's been past day or so it's kind of uh, really laid down and gotten uh, the sound is relatively smooth tonight so that's fortunate we're able to do this and be able to bring you these live shots I wish I could do something more for the quality of the video but this is really the best that we could do for what we had to work with considering the weather. You know, I, that's interesting. I don't know, I don't know what the value of this thing is uh, in scrap um, I think you're real limited on where you can actually take something like this to be salvaged I don't think there's a lot of operations that do uh, this type of uh, this type of recycling um, salvage operations but it wouldn't surprise me if there was actually a, a charge to be delivering this thing or, or, uh, or to be dismantling it. Uh, that would not surprise me in the least. Now we can start to see St. Simons uh, now in the background and almost make out the lighthouse.
almost. It's right behind that crane right now, the, uh, the tower of the lighthouse. Is my boat a Parker 21 Pilot House? Yes, it is. It is a 2003 model, which I actually prefer over the newer ones. Uh, got more deck space on this boat than, than the new models, but yeah. Yeah, that's a, um, we heard the uh, Kurt J. Uh, Crosby a little earlier, and he said that he was gonna try to keep it at five knots uh, out through the channel. So the, uh, the tugs on the, uh, that are back on the barge I have a little better control. And then I guess once they get out to the sea buoy, they will um, pick it up. You know, and, uh, geez, I don't know. I don't know what this, what kind of speed they'll make with this thing in route. I can't imagine it's 10 knots. I would think 8, 9 knots maybe. I don't know. Maybe someone out there has more information, but I, don't, I really, really am not sure. You now I wonder as this piece goes by the Golden Ray, if the Golden Ray doesn't look over and say, wow, I really, really miss my stern. I think uh, last last trip, what was it, about 10 days? Yeah, six miles an hour, what is it, what, it's a knot, 1.15, so yeah, it makes sense. He's really right at six, six miles an hour, five knots, yeah. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I've actually checked out that channel. I actually subscribed to that channel. Um, I, I kind of like the way he's he's got the boat rigged. Again, I like like this deck layout more than his, but uh, he does a lot of fun things with the boat. A trip to the Bahamas sounds really really neat. We've got some good weather. Try to turn into this thing right here. I think the other tugs will drop off. You know, originally when they hooked up this morning, the Crosby Star was the lead tug, and the Kirk J. Crosby was on the tail. Um, and then they stopped and they came back and uh, they brought the brought the section back to they hadn't gotten very far with it uh, and they they came right back to the dock and tied it back off and now we see the Kirk J Crosby out front and the Crosby star on the tail so I guess I guess what they're going to wind up doing is uh, sending this thing on with the with the Kirk J and the star will will stay here in port and it's not the only other tug. They have uh, uh, the Caitlin, uh, the Cheetah, uh, the Stephanie Dan's over in Brunswick as well. There's, there's several tugs that are working the site. 
but these uh, Crosby boats seem to be the ones that are doing the, the transport over to the Gulf. Yeah, there you go. And now we can see the VB really clearly in the background there as this stern section passes by. And wouldn't you know the rain would stop once we get over to an area where we can't fly the drone. <laughs> Just my luck. You know, at nighttime when the when you got the stars out and the lights from the VB out on the sound and it's a uh, a calm night, it really is <laughs> it really is a, a neat sight. Yeah, the guys that were were caught down in the uh, hull of the ship after it turned over those first two or three days after the accident, and uh, we're, we're, we're trapped in there, it's just really hard to imagine. Uh, I bet it was very comforting for those individuals to hear the rapping and tapping and sounds of, of the pending rescue begin uh, just you got to really imagine what was going on in their minds when, the, when that ship rolled over and the sounds that it made and not to mention you know there was a uh, there was a fire that broke out on the ship when it rolled over it was pretty significant that's why we see so much heat damage inside of the uh, uh, that section of the tub where it's so dark, or that section of the ship where it's so dark, there was a fire in there. And of course, the, those cars that are in there are strapped down with, with uh, nylon uh, ratchet straps, I think is what the material they use. If you can imagine a fire in there and those nylon straps getting hot and then breaking loose and cars falling from that kind of height down onto the top of the next one and you're kind of trapped in there listening to all that going on around you. I bet it was, I bet it was quite the experience. I'm sure it's nothing anyone would like to, like to experience. Yeah, good riddance. Glad to see this piece leaving. We've got a few more we want to see on the barge out of here as well. Well, hello, Finland. We really appreciate you tuning in tonight onto the channel. You know, I don't know. Oh, did they have light? I, I can't imagine. I would imagine once the generators rolled over uh, uh, and the system shut down, it got dark unless they had a flashlight or something with them. Which, oh, could you imagine? And then I'm sure the language barrier was something else.
Well, hey, Bill, um, I think what we've, we've seen in the past is, is when once the once the the barge gets out to the sea buoy out of the out of the shipping channel coming into the port of Brunswick, uh, those other tugs will drop off, and uh, just the, the the main tug takes takes the load on, and I expect to see that again. Yeah, uh, the route they're going to take is going to be around Florida, uh, around uh, Key West, and then back into the Gulf. Uh, the height of this thing limits them. Uh, they can't really take any inland routes because of bridges and overhead obstructions, power lines, and that kind of thing. There's really no good route to do that. So, yeah, that's uh, a seagoing process all the way. slow down here just a little bit and see if we can catch this catch this section again yeah I would imagine that once they get out there they're gonna spool off a good bit of cable um, get that get that tug kind of out a good ways in front of the barge Yeah, that next cut will be uh, forward of the engine, forward, uh, which I'm assuming will contain a lot of the engineering parts. this camera back a little bit so you guys can see this. As we learned, uh, there is a, a catch pan, a containment trough, if you will, on the deck of that barge. Um, and I think they have equipment up there to keep it cleaned up. Yeah, I don't think the barges, uh, the tugboats will have any problem making that trip uh, with fuel. I think they are very well stocked with fuel. And I don't see that trip over to Louisiana being a problem to make without stopping for a refuel. I don't know if you guys could hear that radio transmission, but uh, they just released the Anne Moran that is over on the starboard side of the, the barge. Uh, that they they had it from here, and uh, they go ahead and cut him loose. We'll probably see him drop off here momentarily. All the way from Scotland. Wow. 
You guys never cease to amaze me. I'm glad I'm able to bring this uh, to you folks, and I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, right now, they're on channel 10. They're working channel 10 on the uh, on the VHF band. We're going to try to get a shot of the uh, Anne Moran dropping off. We've got uh, the safety boat was kind of giving them a little escort out. We're going to try to get those guys in the shot here. Uh, that's a safety boat for the uh, for the wreck site. Kind of monitors the traffic in and out. It maintains the safety barrier, the safety perimeter for other marine traffic at the site. All right, Amor, thank you very much, Captain. Safe trip back in. That's right, Captain. Summer Van Lee, somewhere. Wow, we got to show you this. Uh, you, you boy, uh, pretty good there. Just took him a couple of tries. Yeah, nice, nice uh, cast. Right. Yeah, and Moran, this is Buddy again. Thanks again. I appreciate the work, and uh, thanks for the coffee and, uh, and the band-aids. Roger, Captain. I'll be safe out here. Roger that. A little bit rolly out here with this fixed camera, but I hope you guys can appreciate that sunset off to the west over the VB 10,000 and what is left of the Golden Ray. And this is the ocean side, what we're looking at right here, of the ocean side of Jekyll Island, just uh, south of the wreck site. And we have our, our, our hometown hero, uh, the Anne Moran, uh, just released from the tow. Uh, that tug is one of the ones, uh, I think it was first on, on scene when the Golden Ray turned over. That tug line handles all the shipping in and out of the Port of Brunswick. And, uh, they were one of the, the, the first responders to the site after the event happened. Well, you're quite welcome, and we really enjoy bringing these to you guys. Anne Moran will make her way back to the Port of Brunswick after assisting the Kirk J. Crosby and the Crosby Star with this stern section of the ship. And we're going to turn around here and kind of get a parting glimpse of this stern section. Headed out, and uh, the camera shot really doesn't do it justice, but it is uh, dark is quickly falling over coastal Georgia. We're going to spin around here and and uh, just kind of we'll be able to show you guys down the beach uh, of uh, St. Simons right here is the as the sun begins to fade in the west. And we see the St. Simon's Lighthouse.
Kurt J, Menorca Mullet. You guys have a safe trip. We look forward to seeing y'all again. Y'all be safe getting around there. Hurry back. Roger, Roger. Thank you, man. Y'all have a good one. That's the St. Simon's Fishing Pier. That's uh, probably the most popular viewing locations for the salvage of the Golden Ray. Still a little ways away, and uh, one of the reasons we started to bring the boat out, we couldn't really get a good view. We wanted to look down at the operation as it was happening. But, uh, Don't really see a lot of folks out. The weather has been miserable here this afternoon. Well, guys, I think that's about going to do it for the broadcast. Probably won't see anything else from us tonight. We hope you've enjoyed this live broadcast of the departure of the Stern from the Port of Brunswick. And we'll be back with you. If you guys hadn't done it, we ask that you subscribe, send us some comments. We love getting them. And most of all, we want everybody to stay safe out there. You guys have a good night.